All right, thank you, Mr. Roberts. We are now ready to rock and roll. Let's go, man. Welcome to the Market Recap Show. Um, yeah, today's going to be another fun day. I want to thank you. Uh, say a thank you to Daniel Shea for coming back uh, on the afternoon show. We'll have her back as a regular guest. Maybe even tomorrow uh, we'll talk to Danielle. But for right now, you're rocking with the Market Recap Show. I want to thank all the traders for once again staying late. Let's have an early drink. Look at these water bottles, by the way. We've got the, the logo on there, the Trader TV Live. Let's go. All right. It's sector recap time. Wow. How often do we see UNG uh, back up to the tops, tops here? Uh, nice move. Let's go over to a weekly chart and just have a or daily chart. Have a quick look at UNG. Nice bottom, man. 460, 550. That's the move you're looking for. Watch out for the 50 period moving average. And again, today we got some nice moves uh, back in oil. You can see here USO up 3.6%. Um, and we're going to talk about why exactly that was. We did have some pressure coming off uh, right now as oil prices rise due to disruption in Libya's top oil field uh, right now. So that's going to be a little bit of a problem there. We talked about this a few times over and over again. Why was oil not really reacting to sort of the Palestine and Israel stuff? stuff and it's because those aren't big huge oil producing nations now all of a sudden when you're talking about Libya Iran getting involved you know the Houthi rebel attacks today again um, in the Red Sea so there's Iranian warships so as we go I I'm not laughing at any of this because this is a bad story but I just think that as more and more pressure mounts obviously down in the Middle East, you know, and floating in through, like we just mentioned there, through some of those canals and Red Sea and whatnot, you're going to have some pressure coming back into oil. So pressure for oil means more oil prices, right? So as supply becomes a question mark, which the U.S. is producing so much oil that, you know, maybe, maybe not a, a factor. We talked about oil getting up to $77. This is, of course, USO right now. XLE, um, this is what I kind of like, but we went over this with Brian Shannon yesterday. XLE kind of in the same spot it's been in all year. Some ups, some downs. We'll find out about XLE. Look, this is something cool today. I want to talk about this. This is one of my favorite ETFs, right? And it's going to be the XLV. Today, XLV, flat on the day. But look at the weekly chart here for XLV, and I'm going to show you the constituents in this in a minute. I feel like we could break out here. I like, Neil talked about buying some Moderna earlier on. I love that play. Obviously, Moderna down today, 4%. But these are everybody that's in this XLV, right? 4.3% Eli Lilly leading the way today. We saw a big move through 600. That's a great move. MRNA, the downside. But the thing about all of this is, and Ben and I talked about this on the podcast, you don't have to pick and choose names, right? You can buy the ETF. This one would be XLV, right? Giving you the Spider Select Healthcare Fund. Now there's, there's a whole bunch. If you want biotechs, you can get IBB, right? But this one has a lot of different names. And I put Brennan on the spot and we talked about the four big ones, right? Eli Lilly, Merck, there's Amgen, there's MRNA, there should be Pfizer in here as well. And then there's the biggest and the baddest, J&J. &J. So you can get all of this in one. But anyways, you guys know all about that. XLV on the weekly looks like it wants to break out. Sure, it's at the tops, but sometimes buying tops isn't a horrible idea. All right, what else is moving around today? TAN. We talked about this with TLT making a move. If rates are going to come back up or back up, going back to the upside, then you could see a little bit of a problem with TAN. Um, again, this is a solar ETF. It's had a nice little move uh, back up to the upside. And again, we look to see if we could take out $61. Let's look out for stocks like Enphase uh, that are in here. We can go over to a daily chart for Enphase. I do want to thank absolutely everybody for joining one more time. It looks like we do have a nice um, amount of viewership uh, popping off right now, over 2,800. So thank you so much for watching here as Enphase with a nice move off the bottom. Shout out to Reliable Rudy and everybody else uh, that made that move. That was $75 bottom, $140, almost a double up in a month and a bit on Enphase. SEDG was the other name, Solar Edge, uh, that really got crushed. And again, these guys got removed from the S&P 500, so creating some down side pressure uh, right there for Solar Edge. The other name, the retail side of things getting hit right now. You know what? I'm not sure that I actually, bear with me here, I'm going to do this right in front of everybody. Um, I'm not sure I have 
the XRT in here. So I'm gonna right click, this is again from Trade Ideas. So you can right click, you go to configure, I go, I go to symbol lists, XR, oh here it is right here, perfect. Let's find out what was moving around today. And thank you so much for watching here today. Look at this, right here. What was moving around? XRT today down 3.6%. Uh-oh, big lots. Uh, Kohl's downside. Five below downside. Dollar Tree downside. Boots Alliance. What's going up today? Groupon over here? Ooh, look at this, little GameStop. What's up, GameStop? Uh, but yeah, this is the name that I'm worried about down here, and I'm not worried at all. I want to buy some more shares. Let's just take a quick look on Costco as XRT. Did you guys like that look? What about if I do that all the time? You know, we'll call up... Fabian, we call up some exchanges, and we'll see what is what are the constituents in there that are moving it. I like that idea. I like it. Let's keep going with it. All right, um, right now, Costco. This is the name for me of most interest, right? A Little bit of a pullback. If we can get any Costco love, it's about another 7% down and we can start to nibble at this at the 50 period moving average. I think it's well worth it. Look at the 200 down here at 550. We get back into there. You're just into the lows of the fall. So there's lots to come. I do want to draw everyone's attention over to the ASA, Ask Sean Anything, shout out to Bears vs. Bulls in the chat. He will be taking down any questions that you might have for me. And I want them to be a little bit unique. If you have something fun, please wind up asking me that. And we'll discuss that. Bears vs. Bulls, get them in the chat. Thank you so much, my friend. What about KRE? We looked, about, we looked at XLF. We looked at a lot of these names. The KRE, the regional banks, right? Nice downside move. Let's look at a weekly chart for this. And again, we're, we're gonna go through some like, constituents again. The important thing is, looking a little bit longer, you still can't get above this $55 mark, right? Those are some of those drop down. Here's Silicon Valley, uh, SIVB, right? Silicon Valley Bank, when it failed, it was the 16th largest, that pause is just for effect. It was the 16th largest bank. And it failed, and then it was kind of like, okay. It wasn't necessarily swept under the rug. I know a lot of traders got hit on that, and there was a lot of traders that made money getting puts early. But look at this, man. It really wiped out the ETF all the way from $60 down into the 40s, where we found some support uh, and then bought it right back. But you're still having a problem getting through that bottom right there of $55, $56. So watch out for KRE. On the other hand, you have ETFs like XLF, and there are other banking ETFs that you can also find some love in. Why is my watch going crazy? I don't even have my phone right now. Um, you know, uh, XLF, still some work to do. But you want to talk about a stock that's absolutely a fuego. Uh, look at JP Morgan. But again, look what we see here on the market recap show. Sometimes it is worth zooming out a little bit, right? We have a weekly chart up here on JP Morgan. And, and to be honest with you, I'm glad I'm hosting this show because I did not identify this. Yo, what's up, Yannick? Uh, over there, my guy over there, Yannick. Um, all right. So just looking here, 173 for the top there for JP Morgan. We're running into some top heavy support or resistance in this situation. I would say lighten up. Nothing wrong with getting a little bit of cash in case the market breaks down. Remember I sold NVIDIA 598, 498? You know, so right now you can buy it back, you make 20 bucks. Again, if you're selling 100 shares, fine. Maybe there's some money to be made there. But other than that, I feel like it's a little too early to get your cash, put it back into something liquid. I feel like it's a little bit, well, cash is the most liquid. NVIDIA is a pretty liquid stock as well. I wait for a little bit of a dump down. I do not think uh, that that move is over by any stretch of the imagination. Okay, we have three or four questions already. Um, so we will get into that in a minute. I did, we already talked about it. Let's go to the next topic quickly. One back. Oil, EVs. Uh-oh. Oh no. What happened there? Did, I, did we do something wrong? Next topic. Oh, I'll get it back. Oh, you got it back. Okay, hold on. Let me do it. Let me do it. No, 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 no. I got this. I got this. Uh, okay. Um, so, yeah, we saw, we, we saw crude, by the way. We'll just look at the USL. 
We saw crude bounce today a little bit, right? So the thing is, is that why I want to talk about this in relationship to EVs is you do have to understand that there's going to be a point, I feel like, although oil is still very much needed in this world, I mean, it might even be, especially if we don't have this recession coming through, we're going to be producing, 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 right? So oil still has a play, I believe, in everybody's portfolio. For me, though, I'm starting to get lighter and lighter on oil names. You might have noticed, I did not buy this dip. I know Randy likes it. Look at XOM. I mean, the thing about it is there's still a big opportunity to go to the downside here. I like all the share buybacks. I really think there's a lot of opportunity here um, for this. Oh, I didn't put on there a uh, recap of my tweets. Uh, we do have some good tweets out there today. I just a little nervous about, about oil and XOM. That's all. It's just, a, it's just more of a nervous thing. Chevron's another great name. This has the largest buyback, I believe, on the street right now. Sands tech name, energy name, anything. Uh, but look, you're just you're right at tipping points. And I just feel like if it tips, then we do make a little bit of a move down into areas that you may want to buy. It's just, are you going to put real money at work right now? I don't know. I don't know if we should do that. But then I go... Then I go over, it's a juicy dividend. There's no doubt about that. Four to five percent on each one of those names. We had Daniel Shea on, and this is where we talked about some EV names. For me, EV is going to be very, very competitive, right? Tesla's already got that first mover advantage, and we've already seen sort of how well Tesla's done. And I mean, don't, don't do this yet. I don't want to go over here yet. I've got to find that graphic that I had uh, from yesterday for Tesla. But the thing is, here it is right here. Let's come over here now. So you could see, uh, if Ramin was here, she'd be saying, Control F10, F11. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, uh, so good thing Ramin's not here. I'll be in trouble. Okay, um, so right here. Oh, oh, no, you know what? I don't think it works very well for, for um, this. All right, for, for images. But anyways, look at Tesla's annual deliveries. And by the way, this is just scary, whoever made this uh, graphic of Elon Musk there uh, in AI. But again, three years ago, less than a million cars, right? This, and, and we're not even, this is just total deliveries. You're, now you're going to get the Cybertruck going. This is also going to be possible for many other um, distribution avenues for these guys, including India, including now more aggressively into China. We've talked about some of these. The one thing that could hurt them, I feel like, for Tesla, and this hurts all EVs, is some of those federal um, and here provincial, their statewide um, rebates uh, or taxable benefits for buying an EV space, uh, EV name. But anyways, 1.8 million, 1.3 million. So you're still producing a lot of vehicles, and that's been the trouble spot for a lot of these companies. But for me, the reason that we buy Tesla has nothing to do with anything like that. It really just has to do with the fact that they have that autonomous driving. And I really think that with Uber making that move up, there's going to be a lot of opportunity for Tesla. But look at this. Right now, 240. Doot, 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 doot. You were 240 back two and a half, actually three years ago. This is January of 21. I keep forgetting that we're in 24 right now. Tesla has given you a few heart attacks to the upside because you're so happy and to the downside because you are so sad. So this is a very, very volatile name. I feel like you keep buying it, but it has to be because you believe in autonomous driving. You potentially like what Elon Musk is all about. Again, you know, the dog that wags the tail. Um, and then, you know, moving forward into new economies, new places like India, possibly giving them a little bit of a boost up. All right, because we don't have Sean's tweets on over there, I do want to talk about a few other things here. Look at Robinhood. First of all, let's look at Robinhood stock. Oh, no. Oh. Heart attack avoided right there. I th you know when you shake the screen and, like, everything, like, goes away. I was like, oh my God, how am I going to get? It still is a thing, my guy, apparently. I got to disable that. How the hell do I do that uh, right now? It must be sticky keys and all that jazz on over here. Uh, but look at Robinhood. Again, you know, really, maybe we can call up a monthly. I'm not sure. Is that where we IPO'd back in 21? No. Uh, let's, go over to a, let's go over to a monthly here on Robinhood. The idea is what I'm going to get is, is as their, oh yeah, okay. As their metrics get better, so this is the monthly, right? So as their metrics get better and better, let's go back to a weekly chart. As their metrics get better and better, right? Their stock price maybe shouldn't be down here. Let's have a quick look at Robinhood, right? So I tweeted this out. 
So here's the share price. So it has it right here. $55 high all the way down now to $8. Now we're a little bit higher than that right now. We're at 11. We're at 12. But look at the revenues, right? Obviously we had a lot of revenues back when everybody was YOLOing everything. But now you have zero day options. I feel like the options market's going to get busier and busier. We have triple and quadruple leveraged ETFs out there. I think people will like to trade. Yeah, there's the new one for SPY. It's XXXX, I think. 4X is four times levered, right? So um, as trading becomes a thing, right now I feel like everyone's waiting. Volatility's kind of leveled off. What if we get that huge market tank? I feel like people can go back to Robinhood. I don't even own any Robinhood shares, but look at some of this. Revenue starting to tick up, right? Look at the net income. If they turn positive, you've only had two positive quarters. When they came out, maybe that's a nothing, but then we had one quarter that was positive, two back. What if the next quarter becomes positive? What does that mean for Robinhood? I just like some of the opportunities here uh, in this. And as we discussed, what do we prefer, Robinhood or SoFi? So that's something else that I wanted to tweet at as well. Um, and then now here, uh, the Kobayashi letter, 4% from its high in just three trading days. So the NASDAQ has fallen down 4% in just three days. Um, the index has erased 600 billion of market cap in just three days. It gives its gains all the way back to December 17th. The Magnificent Seven down more than that, now down greater than 5%. Okay, so again, the big stocks are leading this market back down, just like they let it up. I don't think it's time to push the panic button. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's go to Trader Talk. Yeah, man. Fair talk with your boy. It's Ask Sean Anything. All right, this is dangerous. All right, so let's go. Let's ask me whatever the heck you guys want. All right, I'm going to post whatever it is I'm talking about. What time is it? 4.17. Okay, good. We've got lots of time. I'm going to post it up in the chat. Shout out to everybody that's here. Because we're doing this, let's go a little bit of forward and let's do roll call. Who's here with your boy right now? Traders, stay late. Let's find out who's here. It's lot. Oh, we get some fan funding that I missed potentially? Oh, what's up? Um, Ian Respetto, did you sell all your LLY, Neil, or you still have shares? Good question. We'll ask Neil that tomorrow. Be down. Traders, stay late, baby. All right, what's up? Matt Carnes is in the building. The crazy stitch lady. If you ask me about Disney, uh, what's up to Thang? What's up to Robert? What's up to Matt Carnes? Jay Lee's here. HPDS is here. All right, let's go. Uh, it's ASA time. Ash on anything. I will put whatever we're going to talk about right here so we can all see it. Okay, here we go. It is from Jay Leon. First of all, before we do this, I do want to thank, and here goes it in the chat. I do want to thank Bears vs. Bulls working overtime with us every single day. Thank you so much, my friend. True traders stay late, true moderators stay late, true production production staff stay late, and true salespeople stay late. Where's Kat? You there? I don't see her. She gone. Okay. Oh, she's there. Okay, good. All right. Now, um, all right. So the first question I just put in there, Jay Lee, does Sean ever play options or futures? Here's the question right here in the chat. Uh, why? Why not? I'd expect he would since he's on top of daily moves so much. Okay, do I ever play options? No, I do. I do play options, but not enough to actually sit here and discuss them with you. Like, I was in all of that stuff. Like, I actually was lucky enough to have AMC $2 calls before that, that ever even got going. So that was my biggest option play of all time, AMC $2 calls, um, before it all happened. I bought it off support and resistance. I just thought, like, hey, how low can AMC go? And then everything happened. So I consider myself really lucky. I've lost on options, and I've won on options. I would say net-net, I'm probably up in my career because of that AMC trade. But overall, if I've made 10 options plays, I'm probably red on eight of them. So for me, it's not a thing, and I'll tell you the reason why. It's because there's only so much addiction to the stock markets that I can have. I literally make 100 to 200 trades a day. It's a great question. It's just that honestly, I don't have enough time to go over and study all of these specific plays. I do want to get involved more with options, and I have good news for everybody. We will be trading options on our system in the new year, which is now. So we should be trading it coming up very, very soon. We should have zero day options on our show live coming up very, very soon. Futures, again, no. The only, way, the only thing I do for futures is ETF trading and I will dollar cost average into the S&P 500 and into the NASDAQ 100, the Qs. And then over here, let's take a drink break because I'm getting parched. That's kind of like 
And we go back and forth about New Year's resolutions and stuff. I think drinking more water, we got to get back into that because honestly, getting hydrated, uh, it's very dry in the winter. You got to drink more. So that's uh, something for that as well. But anyways, futures trading, nah, I don't really do that. You'll see me sometimes on the show and you guys know what I trade on that. It is the TQQ, uh-oh. It's Mr. D. Loaf. So I haven't read any of these questions, man. So thank you, Bears vs. Bulls. Let's put it in here right now and talk about this publicly. All right, here we go. It's now in the chat. From Mr. D. Loaf, at Sean Katina, any tips for level two? Oh, no. You're looking at the level two guy right here. So I like to start with this question. Any tips for level two in time and sales watching? I literally graduated in one month looking at the time in sales. So we'll talk about that, no problem. Uh, I keep getting spoofed out of fear of level breaking. I end up getting out to manage risk, really frustrating. Okay, so let's go over to level two. So let's look at what D. Loaf is talking about right now. Thankfully, I have a level two right here. Now, thing that you're looking for when you're talking about level two and stuff like that. So this is right here, the level two, okay? So what you're gonna look for is, and I'll just talk about this real quick. We'll go over the dynamics of this. So these are the market participants, right? MPID, okay? So market participants. Right now, we're only showing ARCA and NASDAQ and, and, and a little bit of NYB. So these are gonna be sort of the exchanges that are hosting shares. So they have shares available. You're gonna see BATS exchange, EdgeX is gonna be on there. There's gonna be various different exchanges or places to execute your shares. Like if Robinhood had a market ID and, 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 and was, was, was a market maker, you'd see them on here as well, okay? But, so you can buy and sell from different stores, let's say. That's what these MPIDs are. Then the price is right here, and then the size. Every single one of these on here, on our level two, is represented by a board lot. So when you're looking at NASDAQ, it'll be 100 shares, okay? So right now, Fabian, how many shares right now are on the first level of this level two screen? Right, 900 on NASDAQ, and how many with ARCA? 100. So there's a thousand shares available right now. Now, in order to understand the level two and how it works, let's go over to something a little bit bigger, right? Let's go over to Siri, potentially a little more size. Bingo! Okay, this is okay. Now, the show started because this is what I used to do. We opened up offices all around the world. This guy was the guy. I was sort of in charge of teaching traders, new managers and everything like that, how to trade, how to understand the software, okay? So I'm gonna ask every single one of you a very, very simple question here. I'm gonna ask it directly to you, D-Loaf. If you're gonna look at this level two, you tell me, would you rather be long or short? Where is the chat right now? So I wanna know if you are going to be long or short here. All around the world, yes. All around the world, again, Oasis, shout out to Oasis, love those guys uh, right now. Answer to the question is short. Yeah, yeah, short, okay, did you say short, Fabian? You said long, but okay. People are with you, long, long, short, 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 long. Okay, the answer to this is short, okay? And the reason why is this is the bid side, right? So the left side is the bid. This is more like learn to trade with Sean, and I'm happy to do that. So this is the buy side, this is the sell side. So this is where all of the sell participants are, the sell side. So look at all of the shares here on the sell side. Look at all of the shares here on the bid side. It's literally like 100 to one. So the demand here on the supply side outstretches the buyers. So supply outstretching demand. So in here you go short. So to answer your question was, how do you not get spoofed? Well, again, 14 million shares, you kind of got to do the math. Is there anything here that's significant against that size? Is it enough pressure? What you're actually looking for is layers like this. A lot of size to protect the sale. Also, if the next order comes in at 42, and this guy kind of moves down to 42, then moves down to 41, that's when we call chasers. That's when you get aggressive. You've seen me do that often on the show. I'll do it again. You're looking for overweighted one size or the other. I will address your questions more and more and more, but D-Loaf, you're basically looking for size, and then when you're looking at the time in sales, the velocity of the prints. Is it just a slow grind? Are they trying to influence the market, or is there a seller really trying to push this thing down. I'll try to do a better job on the show tomorrow uh, describing that, but I hope that did help. That's D Loaf right there. Um, all right. Uh, what's up to Philip Zerbo? What's up, Philip? Uh, right now, another one. one more question after this, then I got to wrap it up. All right, Philip, are you maintaining bear mascot for tomorrow? 
All right, um, let's look at the cues quickly and just do a little bit of work on that one because that's a good question, man. What are we thinking about for tomorrow? And I want to thank you for asking that. All right, so here's the NASDAQ here. Let's call cues, right? Basically, I only look at the cues. I don't even really look at the S&P uh, anymore. Most of the names that I look at, I don't know how I have any idea what happened to my watch list right here. Um, any of the names that we look at are always going, to, for me, the big names are going to be on the triple cues. I don't see a relief candle here. I, you know, again, for me, what we like to look at is where did we close on the day? To answer your question, uh, Philip, we closed on the lows. So the market didn't want to rally into tomorrow. They closed on the lows. We don't have any earnings. Sands, which is kind of, I, I think it's French, without any catalyst for the NASDAQ, Sands, S-A-N-S, um, I just don't see a catalyst to get this market to rally back. Um, so would I be temporarily turning that thing around? No. I'm going to keep it as a bear. I still think that there's bearish action here. I really think with Apple, and again, I just like, as we go here with Apple, that's really going to control the market. You saw Microsoft start to head down a little bit there today. I don't really think there's a catalyst for those guys. But again, Apple, that ban is still hovering. Obviously, it's been paused for now. They can resell some of those watches. But what's the next catalyst? I look to earnings. So until we get through the next earnings uh, phase, I just think that there's this rotation in many different names. We've seen the bank names go to the high side, right? The real money and a lot of the safety trade has been flown into chips, has been flown to Google, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, basically that mag seven that everyone talks about. And I just talked about it. It's leading the market to the downside. The Nasdaq's giving back 4%. Mag seven only giving back more than 5%. So they're leading it to the downside. And with Apple right here, guys, underneath the 50 period moving average, it's going to be hard for me, this guy, to turn bullish until we get the big dog to flip around. Um, on that note, BRK, let's just have a quick look at BRK.B again, because as this name, uh, not working uh, right now, BRK, there it is. This is what I want, dot B. There it is. Okay. So Berkshire actually with a move higher today because, again, we saw oil make that move up. We know Oxy's in there. We know BAC's in there. But again, this is giving me a little bit more pause for positivity. Um, think, I thought we'd be under the 50 period for Burke, and we're not. We're not even close. So maybe, you know, strengthen the market. If to answer your question, Philip, no for NASDAQ, possibly yes for S&P. All right, last question right now. Uh, and it's going to come from Harry. So let's go over to the chat here. And again, thank you, Bears vs. Bulls, as we are running out of time. All right. Uh, from Mr. Harry Lou. What's up, Harry? Uh, okay. Um, I don't know. If this is, is this a fun one or not? I don't know if anyone has any fun questions to ask me. CompuCare. Um, Thank you so much, man. Thumbs up back to you. I, I appreciate it. I do this on my own time. So, you know, no extra pay for this guy. I do, I'm literally doing this for you. There's no other reason. Uh, Harry Lou, what are you looking for when reading level two? Okay, kind of the same thing that we just talked about. Um, large blocks, yes. So great question by Harry Lou uh, right there as opposed to single. Yes, yes, yes. So all of that is a yes, okay? Um, let me just, because we had back-to-back -back questions about level two, obviously it's important. Let's just call up Apple. I'm just trying to look again. So again, I'll ask you the same question. Which side would we prefer? We prefer the sell side here. Bigger shares. Oh, something just happened. So that was at 24, and see it just went down to 23 there. So again, if this starts to follow it down and take, you're not going to get any action now. There's nothing happening in the aftermarket, but what you're really looking for are larger blocks at key levels. You know, somebody sitting here with 2,400 shares on Apple when we've done 56 million, it's not really that big of a deal for me. So that's not it. But if we're going to look at a chart here on Apple and all of a sudden, you know, let's look at, um, let's just look at a five minute chart from today because we'll, we'll find a key level and talk about it. You know, if Apple starts um, sort of mooning up here uh, into this level, 185, right? This is when I would look to see what kind of size is there at 185. You know, is there going to be enough there to protect? No. Is there going to be enough there to protect? I'm saying no to the, the siren, but my guy over there needs to go. 
Uh, 185, so I would look at key levels for size. Thank you so much uh, for all the questions. What else we gotta do right there? Okay, sticky note recap. Hey, it's everybody's favorite segment. It's sticky note recap time. Let's just look at what was on the sticky note. I'll do this real, real quick. Um, how many people are still here? Thank you so much. 2,000, wow. I mean, mad love, man. If I do that Justin Bieber or whatever that is, mad love back to everybody here. Let's just review uh, what's going on with the sticky note. Okay, so the reason why I wanna talk about this is because my chart's right here as well. Apple, short sale. Did we have it? Yes, we did. Unfortunately, these wicks are back. There's 186 short. Where did Apple finish today, guys? Where did Apple finish today? 184, that's a $2, a $2. A $2 winner. That's a sticky note name right there. Now, how did we trade it? I don't have enough time to go over all that. We were aggressively out of it. It had a nice move up. And again, patience is the key uh, for Apple as we zoom in here. Look at this. From 183 all the way up, we waited at sticky note levels, baby. It's Palantir. My second, I believe, possibly, and I don't have my net over on this station, but oh, I do. If I, if I load it up, I don't have that screen up. Uh, Palantir, again, a great fade, man, uh, for us. Did we represent Palantir? Well, yes, we did. Here's the move up to 1640. We shorted Palantir. Again, just to look at the sticky note, short there, out at the end of the day. Does Palantir end at the bottom of the day? Two for two uh, right now. What about Alibaba? Okay, well, Alibaba, again, a name, short sell. We had news about an IPO coming through for Alibaba, but look what we did again. Another one. There's the short, let it rip up. Look what price we wrote, 76 short. Look at the short, 75.60, right? We let it um, get a little exhausted, bang, down to the downside. That is a dollar winner. For Alibaba, three for three. Now, what about Intel? I left Intel alone uh, today. Let's see. We had a 48 short sell on Intel. Forty-eight short sell on Intel. Forty-seven eighty-one. Doesn't get any higher than that. Intel closes. Eighty cent winner. Four for four. Sticky note nation. Stand the hell up. So that's it, nice day today. Thank you so much for watching, man. We've done roll call. I wanna thank everybody for watching again today, man. It's been a big day. I really am passionate about this. I don't know if you can tell. This is why I really love the Market Recap Show. We could be ourselves, uh, which, we, which we are in the middle of the day. We're, we're, we're like that all day, man. We stay, we stay true, okay? But this one is a show brought to you by traders for traders, and I wanna thank everybody for staying late. Please like, subscribe, share this, man. The bigger this gets, the more motivated we are to do more. Thank you so much. We're on a podcast on Friday. The last show of this market recap is tomorrow, Thursdays. Thank you so much for... We have a super chat. We have a super chat. Where's the super chat? Oh, no, I missed it. Um, hold on a second, guys. Fabian. Fabian's the guy that wants to leave, but he just brought this up. Thank you so much. $2. Um, all right. So calm earnings dump tonight. You have puts. Let's go. Congratulations, Mr. Willis Addison. That's what it's all about. Once we start to get a little bit bigger names, I'll focus on earnings, but good congratulations to you. That's it, I gotta get home. What's on the plan tonight? There is some plans, I just forget what they are. Oh, my daughter has hockey, and I think my son's trying to organize a movie with his friends. We'll go see if we can get that done as well. So, all right, I'm Sean Katina. It's at Trader TV Sean on both Instagram and on Twitter. Go follow, we're there every single day. Have a great night, ciao.